Buongiorno. Hi. Hello. Uh, I have a client meeting in about 45 minutes and I am, I think, prepared. Look at how squeaky this table is. This is not. Don't do your client meetings with a squeaky table. I'll try not to touch it. Client meetings are something that can be a lot of stress for people or it can be something that people really do well at and really enjoy. I happen to fall into the latter category, thankfully. I really enjoy client meetings and I think I, I come across pretty well in client meetings, thankfully. Recently, I had someone reach out to me via my website and they left this message. It just says, subject, wedding photographer. Message, hi Chris. I was wondering if you were interested in booking a wedding shoot for May 2025, smiley face. That is concerning <laughs> because they might have a vision in mind for what they want their wedding to look like from a photographic perspective that could be totally different from what I offer. However, I don't really know what I offer yet because I've never really shot a wedding. So we're both in this kind of weird space where it's like, they don't totally know what it is I offer. I don't totally know what it is I offer. So we're just going into this meeting to kind of try and figure that out and see what works for them. Now this was, uh, it turns out, a friend of my partner's. And so it's a little bit of a warm prospect compared to like, a random reach out. Right after they sent me this message, I kind of freaked out a little bit, I'll be honest, because I was like, oh no, what am I gonna ask? What do I say? What do I do? And I was worried. I reached out to my buddy, Taylor Jackson, you might know him. He is a uh, very talented wedding photographer and well-known in the YouTube space for having the biggest wedding YouTube channel on the platform, and, and he's awesome. I reached out and I just said, hey man, I just got an inquiry for 2025. Do you have any videos on first client meeting? But I realized something, which was that I might not have had a lot of client meetings about weddings, but I've had a lot of client meetings. I've had tons of client meetings from a photographic perspective, and even more before that, in the 10 years of doing wholesale in the coffee industry, I have a ton of background in doing these kinds of meetings. So it made me breathe a little bit, made me feel a little bit more relaxed and I realized I actually have a lot to bring to this and I don't have to be so worried because frankly, I, I do know how to sell. So I wanna take a couple minutes to just explain how I'm approaching this client meeting and how I would approach client meetings in general if I was uh, looking to book more clients, which I am and you probably are too. Having a portfolio is really important and your portfolio speaks to your quality of work. However, your portfolio Portfolio does not speak to the quality of the experience of working with you. I'm more likely to get booked for something based on me and who I am than I am on my portfolio. Now that's me. I'm a pretty new photographer in this space. I don't have a huge portfolio. I haven't worked with big brands. And so I don't have a portfolio that completely speaks for itself. My portfolio needs me behind it. But what I think is valuable about that is the fact that if you have a really beautiful portfolio that people love, it opens the door, but if you're a nightmare to work with, very few people are gonna book you for something like a wedding where they're gonna be spending so much time with you. Like you're gonna be with that couple so much that like probably more than anyone else on that day. So it's really important to remember that like you're the one that they're booking, not your work. They have to like your work. They have to believe you can do good work. But I would say it's probably pretty rare that somebody who's an absolute nightmare to work with ends up booking that kind of client. Your portfolio doesn't speak for you. It speaks for itself. You speak for you. And this is where like people like myself who really like to engage with people and my light just died. This is where people like myself actually can, can do well because I can engage with people, I can connect with people and I can listen. And that's the next thing is you actually have to want to listen. You have to want to understand the needs of your client. So when I worked in sales, we talked a lot about dissatisfaction. Like what is the thing that the client is dissatisfied about their current provider or the product or whatever, right? Uh, that could be price, that could be quality, that could be ease of use, that could be um, the way it's selling, all this different stuff. But basically thinking about the idea of like, what is a pain point and how can I solve that? Now, as photographers, we might just think like, oh, you want pretty pictures. Actually, if you go a little bit deeper than that, their, their struggle point, their dissatisfaction point with dealing with other photographers or with a wedding planner or with like, like I'm talking about weddings here because this is what I'm going to do, but you could apply this to anything. Their dissatisfaction doesn't necessarily have to be that they're not getting the quality of photos they want. Sometimes the dissatisfaction comes from how difficult it is to work with somebody the fact that turnaround times aren't quick enough, the fact that the photos that they're getting or the video they're getting or whatever isn't optimized for what they need. What is it that that person actually is struggling with and how can you achieve that? What do you think? So 
Oh, you're smelly. Another thing to consider is how well are you listening to your client? Like, are you waiting for them to finish talking so you can talk about how great you are or about your pricing or about what you can offer? Or are you dialing in? Are you listening actively? And are you trying to empathize with what they're telling you? Are you trying to understand their real, real needs? Not just their pain points, not just their dissatisfaction points, but what they, what they want. You know, like the first thing I feel like I wanna to talk to this client about is like, what are you excited about when it comes to your wedding? Like when you look back on your wedding and you're looking at the photos, what are you most excited about? Some people are inviting a whole bunch of people because they have to, and they don't necessarily really give a shit about having a million photos of them. Some people are super connected to their family and they want tons of photos. Some people are gonna say, well, we're having, you know, my, my great aunt, from uh, Lithuania come in and she's 96 and you know we want to make sure we really get some beautiful photos of her all these things that you can you can understand when you start to listen to your clients a little more now this is totally speculative when it comes to weddings for me I understand that I'm not trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about when it comes to booking wedding clients but I do know what it means to to listen and I do know what it means to try and create a really thoughtful dialogue with a potential client. It's just really important to remember to dial in when you're with the client and really try and just like be present and hear, really hear them. There's this book and it's called The Greatest Salesman in the World. My old boss loved this book. He would, he could recite it by memory. It was crazy, I, I, it's amazing. So it's, it's this book, it's these, what are called the 10 scrolls and that you're meant to kind of like read each of them in progression and kind of let them sink into you and who you are. And I, I wouldn't even go so far as to say like the philosophy of sales specifically, but it's like the philosophy of work, the philosophy of doing good work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you one here, just a portion of one. This is from the scroll marked two. I will greet this day with love in my heart. For this is the greatest secret of success in all ventures. Muscle can split a shield and even destroy life, but only the unseen power of love can open the hearts of men. And until I master this art, I will remain no more than a peddler in the marketplace. I will make love my greatest weapon and none on whom I call can defend against its force. My reasoning they may counter, my speech they may distrust, my apparel they may disapprove, my face they may reject, and even my bargains may cause them suspicion. Yet my love will melt all hearts likened to the sun whose rays soften the coldest clay. Now hold on, I, I don't want people to like distrust my speech or like not like what I wear or like, or be suspicious of me. But I think what he's getting at is that it's like, love conquers all. And that's important, especially when you're looking at like a wedding day where like it's, it does. I mean, like it's love. That's why these people are hopefully getting together and, and that's what you're trying to document. And if, if you can greet that meeting and those people with love in your heart, you're going to do right by them. You're going to try and create uh, meaningful, beautiful images for them that are going to last them a lifetime. Something that I've learned in my time in sales, my time of, uh, you know, being in relationships, my time of like helping my partner to raise her son, is that it's really important to make sure you're hearing people correctly. So something I like to do when I'm dealing with clients or when I'm dealing with you know, any interpersonal relationship really, is to, to kind of like say back to them what I'm hearing. So in this case with these people, I might say to them like, okay, so I, want to, I just wanna make sure I understand what you're looking for. So like, you're gonna have your wedding, it's, it's on this date, May whatever, 2025, Sounds like there's gonna be about 100 people there. There's definitely a few people that are really important to you that we capture. It's really important to you that we get some video clips because you wanna do a highlight film. And, uh, and it sounds like you mostly want this to feel kind of like editorial and documentary style. Like I'm just kind of like a fly on the wall capturing all these moments. It doesn't sound like you're super excited to do a lot of posing. It sounds like really you just want some nice family photos and photos of the day. Is that, is that all right? Did I miss anything? Now, right away there, you're asking them like, okay, are we on the same page? If you're missing anything, then now they have the chance to tell you, or if you got anything wrong, they have the chance to tell you. And then you're also showing them that you were listening to them and that you were paying attention. And I think that can be really, really valuable. One last thing would be, if you can subscribe, if you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate that. I know that everyone asks you to do this. It, it only takes a second and it's helping me chip away at that at that mark I need to get to so that I can push towards doing this a little more full time. 
Right now I'm doing two videos a week whenever I have a chance and it's it's a pretty brutal slog, but it's been super fun. Um, but I really hope that we can uh, make this channel into something super special because I already feel the community growing and I'm seeing people out there who are commenting on the videos and it's it's so cool to see the same people coming back over and over. I just need you to come along for the ride with me. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Go out there and take some photos, show them to me. Thank you, peace. Also, um, I got a comment uh, from, I got a text message from my mom and she was like, I'm your biggest fan, but I noticed a new tattoo. Yes, uh, turns out she does watch, so that's nice. But um, do me a favor and tell my mom you like the tattoo. See what you think, it's still healing, so it's a little gnarly, but like, kind of cool, right? Tell her you like it, so she's not as upset because she hasn't texted me back.